We're here at the ID Tech X conference in Santa Clara, California. Jose, your company, Protein, is really reinventing the wheel. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Protein and, and the conversation that you just had. We'll have a conversation about it. Absolutely. So Protein Electric Make is the uh, global leader in in-wheel uh, motor technology. So what we literally do is we put all of the motor, all the capacity to move, propel the, fo the vehicle forward inside of the wheel itself. Nothing else is needed, no gearing, no other, you know, other things that go on the side. So for with those two, with the two motors, we can propel a car very nicely, a medium-sized car. With four motors, we can really boogie down the highway, you know, with all electric, all power, nothing in between you and the, and the road. This is really revolutionary because a lot of those things that you needed before in a car, like transmissions and differentials, all those go away, right? All those things go away. So we're talking about a cost reduction from that perspective. We're bringing, uh, making it so that um, you, know, you can eliminate all those things and then literally just simplify how things are done. And so all that happens electronically then. I suppose there's an electric bus and then a control bus. A, a control bus for sure, a, a electric bus as well. So what that does is basically it gives the, uh, the person designing the car really a design freedom. What you can do from here on in is basically you can make it into uh, some sort of hybrid, you can make it into an all electric, you can make it into an autonomous car. So basically uh, people have been talking about uh, a skateboard design for years. What this really does is give you that option to have a complete skateboard design, make it completely modular. You go from you know, two wheels, four wheels, from a short uh, you know, wheelbase to a long wheelbase, to you know, different combinations of things to apply to whatever market or segment you're, you're, you want to you tackle. I would imagine that also decreases the time to market as well from design concept to general uh, availability. Absolutely. So what it does is for any OEM, any make who wants to adopt this kind of a system, it really does uh, you know, make the, the time scale a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. you know, typically in the automotive industry, we're used to five, seven year you know, uh, the redesign cycles. With this, um, you can literally you know, take, the, take the, the, the floor and put on top of it whatever you know, cab you want, whatever design you want, and modify it to whatever need you have. So, but the basics are all done, which is you know, great. I mean, when I was uh, working at Toyota, if we had this kind of thing, we would shorten our life cycle so much more. Um, and, you know, as we say in the industry, time is money. So this would uh, actually bear some fruit in that regard. And from a perspective of performance, I mean, what are we talking about here? Is this going to be a, a old lady car from Pasadena or what? Absolutely not. With the uh, uh, two motors that we mentioned earlier, we can have equal, if not better, performance than, say, for uh, an example, an I3 or something of that ilk. So those are instantaneous torque. So, uh, you know, when, when you step on the gas pedal, what happens is that there's a little bit of a delay. Here with any electric, uh, you know, car, it's an instantaneous torque. You basically zoom right from the, from the start line. So there's none of that. Uh, and in terms of handling, you know, put four of those in there, what you get is something called torque vectoring. So it allows you to take a corner really at, instead of slowing down where you're going to take the curve, you can just take the curve straight on. Um, you know, the, the wheels on the outside spin a little bit faster than was the wheels on the inside, allowing you to stay on track and on the road at all times. And it really gives you four-wheel steering too, I suppose. I, with four-wheel steering, greater turning capacity, all those kinds of things that you really can't have with, you know, axle-based systems or centralized motor systems in the case of electric motors. So this really allows uh, any consumer, any OEM, that kind of creative freedom, that kind of, you know, experience that allows, you know, really the happiness of, of a consumer. So. So, uh, you know, I've kind of seen some of these on the prototypes on the, uh, the, of autonomous vehicles and so forth. When will we start to see these on the road? Well, I can't speak to any specific customer, but I can say that it's, it's short, and short in a uh, short time in terms of automotive scale. So um, you know, I, I can see this happening in two to three years for sure. And now you guys are a licensing company as much as anything, it sounds like. Well, we are manufacturing the proof of concept now. We have a factory in Tianjin, absolutely. We are, uh, you know, making our own motors. But at the end of the day, we, it may be that, um, you know, we partner with somebody. You know, we, we recognize that, you know, we may not be the best at the manufacturing side. That's okay. You know, there are others who can play that role much better than we can. So that's something that we're actively seeking. From a, just a basic technology standpoint, what took this so long to happen? What was kind of the thing that, uh, you know, cleared the hurdle that made this possible? Well, I think uh, there's a lot of things that, that have cleared that hurdle. Electronics have gotten better, you know, the battery capacity have gotten better, but essentially this is a hard environment to be in. It's not simple. 
I mean, if you think about it, the, the road is the, uh, the, the wheel is the thing that hits the road on a regular basis. So it's a really harsh environment. So it's not easy to do. Um, and on top of that, these other, uh, other factors like the battery not being able to have the right power density, the, um, you know, the electronics not being uh, able to withstand uh, these kinds of pressures. But now we're at that stage where we can uh, take those on and we have uh, effectively ticked off all the, all the possible negatives and all the challenges and said, nope, oh, we've, we've solved that, we've resolved every, all those issues. We have some patents around that, we have some powers, patents around the electronics, we have some patents around the manufacturing which is the final piece, the manufacturing piece, is not easy. It's hard to do. So part of the reason that, you know, there's others haven't come up as quickly is because it's a difficult project. We've spent the last eight years in of R&D trying to perfect or as perfect as close to uh, as close to perfection this kind of product to make it out there, to uh, put it out there and uh, safely for uh, people to take on, for OEMs, for tier ones to take on. From a cost competitive standpoint, when you're putting motors in every wheel like that, can you be competitive with you know maybe one motor for a whole vehicle? I think we can be cost competitive um, from you know typically people put in two motors for a you know for a vehicle. Um, you know if you think about all the things that you're going to take off, I mean just right the, from the get go, you know you start to wonder, wait a minute, so this could be a complete replacement for that. So I think that from a cost competitive perspective, we can actually uh, do very well. And I'd imagine there's a weight reduction uh, as well. Weight reduction, yep, that comes into play as well. Um, so all that, the weight that used to be in the axle is now uh, gone. So some of it does come back into the wheels. But if you look at the wheel weight, it's actually fairly minimal in comparison to everything else. Excellent. Well, Jose, I really appreciate your time. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it.